We're talking today about COVID vaccines in pregnancy, and we have the expertise of Dr. Kurt Wharton, an OBGYN and medical director of the Family Birth Center at Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak, Michigan. Thank you for inviting me. So Dr. Wharton, there is just so much confusing information about whether or not the general public should take the COVID vaccine, and we won't get into that in this conversation. But you know, I do a lot of you know vaccine advocacy, town halls, you know, and the biggest question is 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 this going to affect my fertility for someone who's not pregnant yet? Then the other question that comes up is, you know, is this going to affect my menstrual cycles? And then, you know, the third thing is, is, is this safe in pregnancy and breastfeeding? There is a lot of misinformation, mistruths that have linked the vaccination with infertility, and it's absolutely not true. The official statement of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists is the recommendation that all eligible women receive the vaccine who are pregnant, as well as all women who are breastfeeding, as well as all women who are planning to become pregnant soon. We know that the vaccine is a messenger RNA vaccine, so the virus is not actively transmitted through the vaccine. Fetal cells are also not transmitted through the vaccine. That's another common misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. So we think everyone, with the rare exception of that person who is unable to receive the flu vaccine, many medications, should absolutely receive the vaccination. What we do know is that if a woman does not receive the vaccination, she's at increased risk. At the beginning of the pandemic, we thought that pregnant women would be at increased risk more than the rest of the population as we see each flu season. That has not been true, but the pregnancy can be adversely affected. At Beaumont Royal Oak Hospital, we deliver close to 7,000 babies each year. Wow. <laughs> During the current pandemic, we have had our share. Right now, 8% of the pregnant women who come to our labor and deliver unit we find to be COVID positive, and many of them are sick and end up fighting for their lives. Wow. We haven't lost a mother yet, but it's been close. And we're not through with this yet, and I can't predict what the future will bring. But what we have found, and what we've, my colleagues across the country have found, is that women who do not get vaccinated and get sick with COVID are at much higher risk of being admitted to the hospital, of much higher risk of requiring supplemental oxygen, much higher risk of being intubated, and they are at much greater risk of delivering their baby at a significantly premature date. Yeah, I think, you know, just... The whole process of childbirth itself can be overwhelming, and to complicate that with a COVID infection just sounds like a nightmare. In terms of antibodies, so many pregnant women, they've delivered and they're saying, okay, if I have the COVID vaccine when I'm breastfeeding my child, will those antibodies you know, be given to my child, and then will my child be protected from COVID? I'm so glad you mentioned that because the answer is yes. Once the vaccination starts to have its effect, the body produces IgM antibodies followed by IgG antibodies, and these IgG antibodies cross the placenta and enter the baby. And we are doing studies across the country, including a study at Royal Oak, mm -hmm. where we're measuring the antibodies in the umbilical cord blood of the babies. And again, babies are at risk. They are born with a naked immune system. Yeah. We have to do everything we can to protect them. Yeah. And then what do you also think about spouses, family members, and that kind of thing as well in terms of getting the COVID vaccination and also the flu and the Tdap? Certainly everyone needs to be vaccinated for the flu each year. Now, in the past, we used to encourage all family members to receive the Tdap vaccine because we are administering the Tdap vaccine after delivery. Now that we recommend the Tdap vaccine be given 12 to 8 weeks before the due date, that isn't quite as mandatory that we insist that family members and friends be vaccinated. But when it comes to COVID, everybody above the age of 16 needs to be vaccinated. So here's my other question about the COVID vaccine that people are concerned about. You know, the thought is it's, you know, relatively new. And how do we know that years down the line, this isn't going to affect, you know, either again, we talked about fertility or affect my child or affect something. I think the fear is that this vaccine is going to be in your body for years and years and that it could you know, affect your child or affect your health. The science behind the vaccine is new. The ability to produce the vaccine so rapidly is new. Now, unfortunately, this vaccine is directed against the coronavirus and the coronavirus is the class of viruses that give us all colds each year. And the coronavirus rapidly mutates. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So we may need a booster shot in a year to address this. We really can't predict the future. Hopefully we'll get the majority of people in this country and across the world vaccinated, so we'll eliminate the virus that way. But if we're not able to do that, we're going to have to keep continuing to fight it with repeat doses of the vaccine. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to emphasize, which we've talked about before on this podcast, is that mRNA vaccine technology has been around for about 10 years, um, so over a decade. So the technology itself is not not relatively new. It's just because we have this novel coronavirus, and so it was um, produced uh, within the last year. And then the other thing, too, is the adenovector um, vi- um, vaccines, which would be like the AstraZeneca or the Johnson & Johnson, you know, those do not have mRNA in it. Um, and that technology has also been around you know, quite a bit longer. So I think, you know, vaccines have been around for a really, really long time, and they've proven to be helpful uh, and protective. And so if you're scared and worried about getting the COVID vaccine, I suggest having a conversation with your doctor to really go through all of your concerns because it really is life or death with this virus. Dr. Wharton, any last thoughts about the COVID-19 vaccine and infertility, pregnancy, and the health of your child? My parting thoughts are, please don't be afraid of the vaccination. Get your vaccine as soon as you can. The sooner we're all vaccinated, the sooner we can get this pandemic behind us. Thanks so much for being with us today. It was my absolute pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Continue your journey to living a smarter, healthier life. Visit Beaumont.org slash podcast to access information and resources related to today's podcast.